Hi, I'm happy to be here today to talk about Varaz, which is our real-time oralization spatial engine that uses ray tracing. I will start by introducing myself. My name is Emile Ouellet Delorme. I work as a programmer and researcher at the SAT, which is the Society for Arts and Technology in Montreal, Canada. To tell you briefly what we're about, the SAT is a non-profit organization that was founded in 1996. It is mainly a center for art, immersion and telepresence. More specifically, I work in a team within the SAT called the MetaLab, and we are a team that focuses on developing innovative software related to immersion and telepresence, whether it's audio or visual. Also, everything we develop is free and open source, and that, of course, uh, includes Vares, the software I will be talking about today. Uh, first, I'll start with a short demo that will hopefully give you a good idea of what Vares can do and what it can be used for. And then I will be talking more in depth about uh, the inner workings of Vares and what technologies are behind it. So let's start with a demo. What you see right now is a squared shaped room. It's eight meters by eight meters with a ceiling three meters high. For the sake of visibility, I will remove two walls and the ceiling, but the sound will consider that they're still there. Now the red sphere that you see corresponds to a source of sound. In this case, it's my voice. The blue sphere is the listener, so what you hear. If I turn on Vares with this information, what you will hear is something like this. So this is what you would hear if I was the red dot and you were the blue one, according to Vares anyway. But if I change the material properties of the walls, floor and the ceiling, it could also sound like this instead. This sounds pretty different, right? The point is that the information you give to Vares to work with plays a huge role in the result and the material properties in particular are very important when trying to replicate reality. So if we were to walk further apart one from another, I will sound as if I was standing further away in the same room. And if I move around the room while you stay in place, what you hear will evolve over time. And that's basically what Vares does. It is an audio engine that simulates the acoustic response of a 3D space given different parameters such as the materials and positions for sources and listeners, and it does it in real time. Now let's talk about Vares itself. Uh, Vares is a tool for simulating the acoustics of virtual environments. Currently it only works on Linux, and it's more of a library than a standalone software meaning that you can easily use parts of it and not necessarily the whole thing, and there's really more than one thing that it can be used for. It has three main components that are built to be used together, but that can still be used independently if you want to. Um, those three components are the ray tracer, the encoder, and the oralizer. The first component is the ray tracer itself. Uh, the ray tracer takes as an input the scene, which is the 3D model that we want to simulate. It also takes the coordinates for one or multiple sources, as well as the coordinates for a listener, which corresponds to a person or a microphone usually. And what comes out of the ray tracer, its output is a list of what we call sound events. And sound events each correspond to a specific amount of energy, at a specific moment in time, with a specific direction of arrival. The first thing that the ray tracer does is to check whether the sources are visible from the listener, or whether the path is obstructed by a wall or an object. If it's visible, then we create a sound event that corresponds to the direct sound. And as you can see on the screen, we give a volume to the sources so that we can calculate the proportion of the initial energy that reaches it, and that proportion will be the energy contained in the sound event that we create. Before I keep going with the explanation, I want to specify that we usually throw the rays backwards from the listener to the sources, rather than the normal way around. 
This allows us to throw significantly less rays for the same resolution when there is more than one source in the scene. In the pictures shown in the presentation, the rays are thrown backwards, so don't get confused by it. Once the first step is done, the ray tracer will then throw multiple rays in random directions in the scene from the listener or from each source, and those rays will check for collisions with walls or obstacles in the scene. And if a ray hits a wall, then there will be a reflection and new rays will be thrown from that reflection point. One new ray for the specular reflection and a few more in random directions for the diffuse ones. And those rays might reflect again and again and again until we reach a limit that can be defined by the user. Uh, this ray tracing is a stochastic method, which means that the more rays that we throw from the starting point, the more accurate the result will be. But of course that also comes at a higher computation cost. Um, usually we throw an amount in the ballpark of 5,000 rays from the starting point. And that ends up multiplying a lot uh, when those rays reflect again and again. In order to generate the sound events from reflected rays, we basically do the same thing that we did for the direct sound, but from every reflection point in the scene that we found while throwing the rays. Uh, that method is called diffuse rain. From each reflection point, we check whether each source is visible, and if they are, we create sound events that correspond to the proportion of energy that will reach the source from that point. That proportion of energy will have to take into account whether uh, the specular reflection reaches the listener, or whether it's only diffuse ones, and calculate it uh, accordingly. So that's a basic summary of how the ray tracer works. Now, if we want to move the coordinates of our sources or of the listener in real time, we have to recalculate a new set of sound events with the new coordinates again, and again as fast as possible. And this is when the number of initial rays matters so much, because the smaller it is, the less accurate the result, but the faster we can update it. The second component is what we call the encoder. What it essentially does is convert the list of sound events that we generated using the ray tracer into an ambisonic impulse response. The final room impulse response is essentially a series of delayed, filtered, and scaled Dirac impulses, and each one of those Dirac impulses corresponds to a sound event that was given to the encoder. Um, the energy in the sound events is divided in eight frequency bands. The main reason for that is to take into account the properties of the materials in the scene, as well as the attenuation from the air. We use a Linkvitz Riley filter tree to build the impulse response itself. This is an infinite impulse response filter rather than a finite one. Um, using an infinite impulse response uh, generally provides a better frequency resolution. And it also means that the computation cost is proportional to the length of the impulse response rather than the amount of sound events uh, given as an input. Uh, which we generally found to be preferable uh, since it saves a lot of time as the resolution of the impulse response goes up. The third and last component in Vares is the Aralyzer. The Aralyzer applies the ambisonic impulse response generated by the encoder and allows it to be updated in real time. So it takes as an input an impulse response as well as an audio stream that corresponds to the sound played by a source in the scene and then it outputs ambisonic specialized uh, audio, which is the convolved sound. It supports multiple sources, each with their own impulse response, and those impulse responses can all be independently uh, updated in real time. We also simulate the Doppler effect when the delay before the direct sound varies when updating the impulse response. It means that when a sound is approaching us quickly, we will perceive its pitch as being higher, and vice versa. Vares currently works, but it's still very much a work in progress. Uh, we're currently working on adding support for diffraction, improving the documentation so that it's more accessible, and we're working on optimizing the code as well. If you're interested in taking a look, here's a link to the GitLab repository 
There's also my email, I will be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. So thank you very much for listening.